Hey again, everyone. Long time no see. Great to see you here at uh, the Voice of College Football. It is the date that we've all been waiting for in regards to rankings. If you love rankings, or even if you don't, if you love college football, you know the rankings matter, unfortunately. And here we are at uh, 7 o'clock Eastern Time on November 2nd. The calendar's been circled. College football playoff rankings, the first inaugural initial rankings of the season released by the committee. So throw out my rankings, throw out the AP, throw out the coaches poll, strike that, throw out the coaches poll, throw out the AP, keep mine handy, and we'll check out the college football playoff rankings tonight, knowing that the committee will be able to explain this in any way they see fit. And then going forward, even if there's not a whole lot of logic involved in the way teams move up and down, they will be able to explain and justify that as well. But we will hold them accountable here at the Voice of College Football. We appreciate everybody being here for the big watch party. We will watch the playoff rankings being unveiled, and then we will take your comments, questions, and calls. I believe that based on what is happening in the college football season and based on the obvious, that Cincinnati's in a different category than everybody else. Everybody else is over here. Cincinnati is clearly in their own category because they're in a group of five conference and their schedule to date is the worst out of all these teams that are in contention. And it's con con going to continue to get worse. It's going to be by far the worst resume. No question out of these six or seven contending teams. So what is the playoff committee going to do with Cincinnati? That's going to tell us more than anything. Because whether Michigan State's two or four or Alabama's two or three or four or five or wherever they are, everybody else involved, most everyone else involved, controls its own destiny. So whether Michigan State's five right now or two right now, they've got to play Penn State and Purdue and Ohio State in a Big Ten championship game. And they're either going to validate their ranking and continue to move up and substantiate it and place that in concrete or Michigan state's going to lose and drop out. That's all there is to it. Alabama, the same thing, Georgia, the same thing, Oklahoma, the same thing. Or again, to a certain extent, the same thing. Wake forest. Well, we'll have to wait and see. They've got their four most difficult games coming up. Make that five most difficult games with the conference championship game. So we've got the resume We've got the schedule. We've got strength of schedule, strength of record. I test. Let's see what all of you have to say here at the Voice of College Football. When it comes to Cincinnati, I don't know where they're going to be ranked. I've got them at number seven, I believe. I just don't think that their opponents warrant them being ranked higher, and especially when they've not dominated and have scraped by the likes of Navy and to a certain extent Tulane. All right. Let's uh, check out your comments before we uh, lock in here. John likes since he had five. I'm a hero since he had seven. John says even better. Keep him down. Jet Mac, Georgia, one. Ohio State, two. Alabama, three. Oklahoma, four. Thank you. That's our show. Good night, everyone. Whoa, 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 whoa. No, 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 no. Everybody stay here. Everybody stay here. John. Okay, here we go. Let's get to it. We got our top 25. Pitt 25, San Diego State 24, Fresno State 23, Iowa 22, Wisconsin 21. Should I mark this down? They should have this online immediately, right? Right. Uh, Wisconsin ahead of Iowa. Got it. They just beat them by 20 points. Fresno State, San Diego State just lost this past weekend to Fresno State. That's interesting. They've got four teams stacked on top of each other in which the team with the worst record beat the team with the better record, and they've got the team with the worst record one spot, one spot ahead of them, and then pit at number 25, okay?
Iowa obviously needs help to win the Big Ten Western Division after losing to Wisconsin. Wisconsin holds its own destiny, as does Minnesota, and they play the last game of the season. Let's see what else you guys have here, or what do you think about 21 through 25? Where will Florida be ranked? Uh, we need to move this out to about 75 spots for Florida. Oh, you don't deserve to be that high. They barely beat a lot of teams. Cheryl's proud of the Buckeyes. They're young, playing better every week. All right, here we go. 16 through 20. Minnesota at 20. NC State at 19, Kentucky 18, Mississippi State gets a lot of love at 17, Ole Miss at 16, Mississippi State with three losses. They did lose to Memphis, controversial ending, but still lost to, lost to Alabama by 40, and Mississippi State all, also lost to LSU. Mm. So they got a win against Kentucky, so they've got them, again, a team with the worst record that beat another team, Mississippi State over Kentucky, this past weekend is one spot. This has now happened three times. One spot ahead of Kentucky. Ole Miss at 16. So the, the committee is obviously valuing schedules. And they always have, and they should. As uh, Herb Street just mentioned, uh, Minnesota runs the ball 73% of the time, and they've lost three running backs. Lost their two best running backs and just continue to run the ball down everyone's throats. 11 through 15, BYU all the way up to 15. Mm, Texas A&M 14, Auburn 13, Baylor 12, Oklahoma State 11. Oklahoma State beat Baylor, and they've got the same record. Auburn and Texas A&M play soon. Don't uh, Auburn and Texas A&M play this week? I believe so. Auburn, Texas A&M, that should be a heck of a game. BYU might be a little high. BYU losing to Boise State and Baylor. Okay. Yeah, Oklahoma's got a backloaded schedule, that's for sure. They still have Baylor, Oklahoma State, and Iowa State as well and the Big 12 championship game. So these teams in the Big 10 and the, um, the SEC West in particular in the Big 12 still have about four tough games to get through. Can you imagine an Oklahoma State or Baylor getting back into this because they still have about three tough games plus a Big 12 championship game to get through? And if they finish 12 and 1? All right, let's get to the top 10, folks. Let's see it. Here we go. One at a time through the top 10. I number 10, Notre Dame. I believe I've got Notre Dame at nine. The Irish, of course, they got the one big loss, and that loss is going to keep them out of the playoff because Cincinnati would have to lose twice for Notre Dame to jump Cincinnati in a certain sense if you hold true to head-to-head. -to -head. So Notre Dame to get to the playoff needs a whole lot of help. 
more so than other one loss teams because they don't play a conference championship game. And Notre Dame, that's the way it is. That's the way it should be. Number nine, Wake Forest. There they are. Eight and O. Oh, but who have they beaten? Virginia. Virginia is the best win. All right, let's see number eight. That's uh, pretty much my favorite, pretty much my, my rooting interest right there would be Wake at nine. Man, I'm rooting for Wake. Who else is rooting for Wake to go undefeated and just blow this thing up? Blow it up, Wake. Blow it up. So right now, as Reese Davis just said, Cincinnati's strength of schedule is 100th and Wake's 98th. But Wake's is going to jump since he's going to stay down. Oh, boy, look at that. This is the first committee move that's going to raise some eyebrows. Oklahoma at 8. So obviously that has everything to do with him beating West Virginia, the last play of the game on a last-second field goal. Barely beating Nebraska by one score. Escaping Tulane 40 to 35. Having to come all the way back from 21 down to beat Texas. And oh, the ugly, ugly effort against Kansas. So the committee, hey, I I don't necessarily disagree with this, even though I've got Oklahoma ranked three. Uh, I have stated over and over, my rankings are razor tight between two and eight. So Oklahoma, they're, they're still fine. We understand that they're still fine. Even though they're number eight, they're fine. They've got Oklahoma State, Baylor, Iowa State, and a Big 12 championship game. Just win. Now they're at the part of the season, so if they would have won these games big, of course, they'd be much higher. They could be number two right now based on where they started the season. Um, but they haven't, so they're fine. Now it's just about winning. If they win as ugly the rest of the way, they're going to be fine because teams are going to be losing. All right, let's go to seven. Michigan. So Michigan stays ahead of an undefeated Oklahoma team. And that's fine. If they lost to one of the better teams in the country, which we think they did, Michigan State. We're still waiting for Michigan State to prove more. We're still in this proving state for a lot of teams that have beaten a lot of bad teams, have beaten marginal teams. but And Michigan would have a better win in Wisconsin than Oklahoma has Texas. If you look at the best win and Michigan's been more dominant against the likes of who uh, Northwestern and who else in the big 10, somebody else they whipped up on. So we are waiting on number six. What do you guys like and not like at this point? Nebraska. Well, we're waiting on Nebraska, of course. Nebraska, with all those one-score losses, I think the committee is definitely going to value the eye test with Nebraska. D-Rock says Michigan's too high. Of course, a Notre Dame fan would. Yes, D-Rock, I got you. 
I've got Michigan at eight, I believe. Oh, here we've got our board of six because we want to see the last two out. So Georgia's one. Does anybody disagree with Georgia being number one? Anybody in America? And of course, I hate to pull ratings away from ESPN. I hate to do that, but I appreciate everybody being here. Thank you so much for that, that uh, we are pulling massive ratings away from ESPN. They're going to have to do some research tomorrow morning to figure out what happened to our audience. Oh, they all went to the voice of college football. Georgia had won. Does anybody disagree with that? Okay. What's going to happen, have to happen for Georgia to drop from one to five? That's what's got to happen is the committee's got to say they're the best team with the best resume and they fall to five. Alabama at two. Alabama at two. That's too high. Okay, this tells me I test slash what that really means. I test means name brand number two. Alabama should not be number two. They blasted Ole Miss. Okay. Ole Miss has done what? The committee is setting itself up for Alabama to beat Georgia in the championship game. And yeah, what, what Galloway's talking about, I believe right now, not that I listen to him too often, is that Alabama could possibly win out the rest of the regular season, lose the SEC championship game in a close game, and still, let's say, drop from two to four. Alabama could lose two games and still finish at number four. All right, number three, we've got Michigan State. Okay, makes sense. If you compare Michigan State and Alabama, Michigan State has not lost. I think that means something, right? You have not lost a game. And Michigan State's got a better win than anything Alabama's got with Michigan, right? Even by the committee's rankings. Alabama's beaten Florida, Ole Miss, Miami. Hmm. Ole Miss, Florida, Tennessee, Miami. Okay. Uh, so now we're looking at Cincinnati, Oregon, and Ohio State, and that's probably the order we're going to see them. At number four, Oregon. Cincinnati's in trouble. <laughs> They are in trouble. How are they going to make up ground if these teams don't lose or if Alabama and Georgia just, regardless of what happens there, basically the committee has set up Alabama and Georgia to play in the playoff. Yeah, it looks like Cincinnati's out of this thing. They need a lot of help because even if they're five and Ohio State's six, whatever it is, five, six, six, five, Ohio State has the opportunities coming up. Although Cincinnati can rest on Ohio State's going to knock out Michigan State or Michigan State's going to knock out Ohio State.
we will be taking your calls after we get five and six. I've got to hook up the phone lines, and then we will take your calls and get your perspective on all of this here at the Voice of College Football, of course. Appreciate everybody being here. And why why five and six is so suspenseful, I don't know. But uh, they got to drag this on for an hour, right? Um, I think we would like to hear from the um, committee chair as well. Number five. And we can all compare how much of a delay our TV has compared to other people. The Buckeyes at five and Cincinnati at six. There you go. There you go. The big surprise for me is Oklahoma at eight. That's the big surprise. I'm not necessarily arguing with it or find it to be that egregious. We got uh, Birmingham Kane thinks Cincinnati got screwed over. D-Rock, yep, that's what it looks like. Do we really know, as Herb Street just said, that an SEC championship game loss is eliminating Alabama? They're at number two. You lose to the consensus number one team by a field goal on the last second of the game? Gary says Oregon is too high. The Rod Farva says Oregon should be higher. Not news Dexter. These rankings mean nothing, absolutely nothing. They don't go week by week like you do. Uh, Peter is saying, what's the stat where no team ranked two or three has made it to the college football final four? Uh, so we're talking about in the first. That would be interesting to look at to look at the first initial standings each college football playoff rankings season. May do a video on that. Man, I'm going to mark that down for a video. So Galloway just said Cincinnati's being disrespected, but he said not being in the top five is understandable. Kendrick, Kendrick is the GOAT and also likes Georgia, Ohio State, Alabama, and Oregon in the playoff. Uh, Kenneth, Mark, you picked uh, Alabama and Georgia for the natty. You are right, Kenneth. Yes, I did. Thank you for the reminder. Don't know if that's going to come to pass, but uh, that's what I had with Ohio State and Notre Dame losing in the playoffs. So I would like to hear what the uh, committee chair has to say, and then we'll hook up the phone lines and we'll get at it. Uh, what do we got here, Gary? Mark, that's an old talking point. The person quoted an old data point. The initial college football poll, number two, number three, has yet to make the 
subsequent college football final four. So, okay. Well, that's what I'm talking about. It obviously has to be an, an old data point because we don't know who's making the final four this year. Uh, but I wanted to go through and see, well, Cincinnati is moving up to a power five conference. All right, folks, let's go Deeks. Yeah, let's do it, boys. And uh, girls, of course, are 3% of our audience, Cheryl and others. Bring in those ladies to talk college football with us. That would be great. And uh, we're going to be cranked up here for the next um, who knows how long. We'll keep these phone lines humming. So 227 on the line. Go out there and grab anybody who loves college football. We're going to talk playoff rankings. I'm going to hook up the phone lines right now. And in addition to that, we are only going to pause because I want to hear what the committee chair has to say. But otherwise, we are on the clock taking your calls as soon as I hook up the phone line. So talk amongst yourselves. And I am curious to do a historical video looking at the first seven years of college football playoffs to see what happened to the, the first four. I know what happened the first year. The first year we had what? Mississippi State was number one. Ole Miss and Auburn were in the top four. Wasn't, wasn't the first college football playoff release week one, 2014, all SEC teams, right? It was Mississippi State, Ole Miss, Texas A&M, and Auburn, I think. Thank you for calling Colin Studios host and Guess I got to reconnect the call in. Enter your six-digit PIN number. Welcome, host. You are now in the host room and can manage your callers from the Colin Studio web interface. Welcome into the voice of college football. Who's on the line? This is Jeremiah. Victory. Thank you, Jeremiah. Appreciate you being here. Thanks for waiting. Yeah. Uh, what's on your mind? Yeah, I was looking at the uh, the ranking and where Cincinnati was placed, and I'm looking at teams that are behind them, and I don't, I don't really see a way for them to to work their way in the playoffs, especially since they they're they're uh, buffing up the Mountain West Conference with Fresno State, and. Uh, they didn't rank Houston with one loss or SMU that was undefeated with one loss. Now, um, they, and those losses are basically going to be nothing. Like you said earlier, they need them to be undefeated in order to be, have a record You're uh, being on, you're, hey, you keep yelling. You might be on ESPN radio, bud. <laughs> okay. Now I got to make a choice to, to kill one of these two, and I don't know which one to kill. Here we go. So I apologize to whomever, but uh, through the whole technical issue, there were two two phone calls coming through. So who am I still on the line with? Hello, hello. Hello? Yes. Hello, Mark? Yeah, it's Mark. It's the real MVP, how you doing? Uh, the real MVP, and my apologies to uh, the other caller. But um, I had to pick one, and I have no idea what the, the numbers obviously are and who's who. So anyway, again, please call back. I um, guess that was the lucky winner. You you were the lucky winner. What's going on? Well, I want to talk about these rankings because there's some interesting trends I've noticed within the rank. Okay. Wisconsin is ahead of Iowa. And yep. Mississippi State's ahead of Kentucky. Yep. Even though each of those teams have one more loss than the other. Yep. Is it possible if Oregon loses that they're still ranked ahead of Ohio State? No. No. <laughs> no. I, I, wouldn't, I would have thought no. No. But just knowing and seeing how those no. two things went down? No. 
No. Okay. Just it just it's coincidence. Okay. It's coincidence. There's a one spot difference. Okay. If if Wisconsin had the same record as Iowa, they would be seven, eight spots higher. And if Mississippi State or if Kentucky uh, back that up, Mississippi State, it would be the same deal. No, it's just a coincidence. No, was, Oregon cannot go out and lose to Oregon State in, and stay one spot ahead of Ohio State. No. Okay, I was just I was just making sure because I just saw that trend in the committee, you know, for the, those patterns. I thought it was worthy of asking. I thought it was unlikely as well, but I noticed it. It was an odd quirk I noticed. Yeah, it was an odd quirk. I, I, also, I noticed it as well. It happened with those two. It also happened with, not in the same way, but Oklahoma State was one spot ahead of Baylor and they beat them head to head. But they have the same record. So, what really, I think Cincinnati, I know some people think they're too low. Some, I think they're just right at six, in that six range. I mean, what hurts them more, though, than six is SMU and Houston both not being ranked. And instead, other group of five teams like San Diego State and Fresno State being ranked. Because at least if there was a power five in the top 25, you can see them losing, but with the competition that San Diego State and Fresno State have to play, it's unlikely they lose. Yeah, Cincinnati's in a tough spot. There's no way around it. They need they need chaos in the Big Ten. They need chaos. Even the teams behind them are going to leapfrog them. That's all there is to it. Oklahoma, it it was a statement made by the committee that they don't value Oklahoma's wins because of the sloppiness of them, but they're fine. Yeah. They're fine. They just have to win the games in front of them. All I'm saying, Mark, is I said that exact same thing 24 hours ago. I'm going to give myself a little pat on the back because I had them at eight, which I know I was probably one of three people on earth who had them at eight, but well, I'm going to give myself good. a pat on the back. Literally, I am right now. I'm going to give myself a pat on the back because regardless of what my rankings are compared to the committees, I'm always going to say mine are correct. So they don't have to line up with the committee. No, I'm just kidding. Um, I have never stated that mine are flawless in any such way. Uh, I have Oklahoma at three. She will know. But uh, yeah, you line yep. up with the committee. I think I think if they beat Baylor, they're going to jump Cincinnati. Yeah, you would think. I so. think that's all it's going to take. Yep, I think so too. Now Wake Wake Forest, they also need a lot of help. Right. In turn, I think Wake Forest is going to need help. A little bit of help, not much. But I think there is some scenarios where Wake Forest being 13 and 0 does make the playoffs. Wake Forest does not need as much help as Cincinnati, but they 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 would oh, no, appear no, 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 to no, no, make no, no. help need some help. It's Alabama if Alabama beats Georgia, and then you have a Big Ten winner, and Oklahoma goes undefeated. That's the four. It's looking like. And Wake Forest would be left out at thirteen and zero, which if Alabama if Alabama totally wins agree. the rest of its games, they're going to do nothing but obviously stay at two, but have a much stronger grip on number two. And then if they go right. and lose the championship game to Georgia, razor close, aren't they going to still make the playoff? I would have them in, but I don't. I disagree. Now I typed it in the chat with with Kirk and all of them people were saying like, nope, nope, they can't be in. They can't be in. They got two losses. It's like, where's that in the rule book? You have two losses, you're out. It's I mean, not in the rule book. Georgia by three. Right. I, I would. I wouldn't have them in. 
I'd kick them out, but the way they're setting it up right now is for Alabama to stay in the playoff if they lose the SEC championship game close. Right. Even let's say even honestly, I could see them losing even it's by ten at this point. Well, if if because Alabama wins the or I'm sorry, if Alabama loses the SEC championship game by ten points and they make the playoff and let's say Wake Forest is undefeated and Oklahoma's undefeated and Ohio State or Michigan win Michigan State win the Big Ten title, whomever wins the Big Ten championship, and and they get put in above one of those three teams, then I don't know what I'm gonna do. Right. And by the way, I'm not saying I agree with Alabama being placed in the playoff. I'm just saying what I think the committee will do. Because I know there's a lot of people out there that after listening to calls, they think I say something and they just think it as that's my point of view. No, that's what I'm thinking they will do. And I think Alabama, if they lose the SEC title game with two losses, hmm. let me ask you this, Mark. Okay. If Alabama loses the SEC title game by three points, do they have a better shot of getting in the playoffs than Wake Forest going undefeated? Based on the committee. Just based on the committee. Yeah, they do. I would put Wake in. And that's and if that if that should tell you how system how the system is broken right there. That should be inexcusable. Um, I'm trying to think what. Well, well, Mark, that's all I got for you tonight. All right, man. I appreciate it. it. Good talking to you. Absolutely. Glad Coastal wasn't ranked. There you go. Have a good one. All right. uh, Next up here at the Voice of College Football, who's on the line? Uh, Kevin, Dallas, Georgia. How are you doing this evening, Mark? Kevin, what's going on? Uh, well, I'm just going to have to be honest. As you're quite aware of, hey, my heart runs crimson. You know where my allegiance lies. But I have to be honest with you, Mark. Um, I wasn't, I was, I was shocked by being ranked number two. And I just wanted to, as far as the gentleman that was just on, as far as the reason why Mississippi State picked back, uh, Kentucky as well as Wisconsin's I was because of head to head. So, well, yeah, he knew that. That's what transpired. Yeah. Okay. So, I mean, that was that was what was what in regards to that. Sure. But if Alabama wins out and say, for instance, I don't give a dog on whether they lose to Georgia by one or whether they lose to Georgia by 100 in the SEC, SEC championship game, Mark, you're quite aware that, hey, the other 40-plus states suffer from SEC fatigue, and by that being the case, there's no way in blankety blanks that Alabama would be in the Final Four with two losses. Because as you and I have discussed before, um, you, you, well, I was 100% as far as what I'm about to say, and you kind of lean toward it, but you had also stated that, hey, you would not have put it in as in the year that Tua got hurt. And it was a matter of Alabama finished the regular season with two losses, didn't make it to the SEC championship game, and but they were one of the best four teams. But the thing is, they had two regular season losses, so, hey, that was the um, – hey, that was the burr in the South, and that's the reason why they didn't make it. Would they have uh, a better showing as far as versus LSU than Oklahoma? Yes, sir. But two losses, they're not going to do that, Mark. They're not going to do that. I wouldn't be so sure. You were telling me that if Alabama is impressive, the next four games goes to the SEC championship game and loses to the consensus number one team by one point, that you're you're sure that they are not going to make the playoff. I would have to say yes. Now, if you want to say what my what my heart would say, my heart would say okay, they deserve it. But as far as if, you're, if I'm looking by these uh, new gentlemen and new ladies that happen to be behind the door, I think that hey, they learn from their predecessors as far as having SEC fatigue. And by that being the case, I don't think that they'll be willing to do it, Mark. Well, if they the- did it, then As you stated before, the system definitely needs to be blown up. Well, what they're telling me tonight is that the combination of the eye test and the resume is obviously they value Alabama as the second best 
resume combination eye test in the country. What has Alabama done to date? They lost on the last play of the game, basically, to Texas A&M, who's a top 15 team in the country. They, the best win on their schedule is Ole Miss. They blew them away. Now this Florida win is looking worse and worse by the week. And they beat a Miami team that's pretty marginal, but getting a little bit better. So they have in, in Tennessee, we'll put Tennessee, we'll put Tennessee, Florida, and Miami. They're all four and four. We'll put them pretty much in the same bucket as being the second, third, and fourth best wins. And then the Ole Miss win stands out right now. And with that, that's the resume that's the second best in the country. So I don't think it is, but based on whatever other factors that they're going to call eye test, I call it eye test slash brand and what they know about the talent that they vault Alabama number two. So if based on that, that they're saying Alabama is the number two team in the country and they're going to go beat Arkansas, LSU, and Auburn to just further substantiate number two, and then they go play number one and lose by one point in the SEC championship game, I could see them just dropping from two to four. Wow. If that were to occur, Mark, I, I, I would once again, just as I was, I guess, maybe 10, 15 minutes ago, dumbfounded, I would be even more so if that were to occur. But I just want to throw this out also, Mark. And it's a, and I know as, as the old saying, if ifs were fifth, we'll all be drunk. But as far as a, to what if, and that is Alabama wins out, plays Georgia in the national championship, and wins. Alabama beats Georgia. Okay. What would be the lowest that Georgia would fall? And then the other question would be, would that being the case, we'll assume that Georgia would still be in the top four. Would it be set up that Alabama and Georgia would not play in the first round in the playoffs? Yeah. So uh, the real MVP put it up there too. Uh, yeah. I would think that the committee is going to do everything that they possibly can do to avoid a rematch. So yeah, they, they're not going to tell you that. They're going to tell you that they rank the teams regardless of what conference they're in and regardless of whether it's going to set up a rematch. That's what they're going to tell you. Um, but, yeah, they, they don't want that look for television. They want to avoid that. So We don't want to have another LSU-Alabama twice. So. Yeah, so, so they would go with the 1-3 matchup. All right, so if they can possibly do it, which they, they can justify anything, or they think they can. So your next case scenario was, will, is there any possible way that Georgia misses the playoff if they lose the SEC championship game? Well, I'm trying to think, but what would the lowest that they would fall? Would it be, okay, you lose the, the uh, SEC championship game and fall to four? Sure, they could lose, they could drop to four. Possibly. They get blown I was just, out. Really just more so looking at numbers. Yeah, because I, I didn't feel as far as them being eliminated, it was just a matter of just simply wherever they fall. And I was thinking the lowest that they would would be four. So. Because as far as the defense is concerned, Mark, impress. Uh, more so as far as uh, number 99 is concerned. If we could just uh, get 99 on academic probation as far as for the SEC championship game, that would be greatly appreciated, but I don't think that's going to happen. But that's my biggest concern as far as their defense. Because the only excuse, Mark, and after this, I'm an extra stage left, is that I don't want to hear from Georgia fans if for whatever reason Georgia don't win it this year. Is that Stinson Bennett, the four, or as we call him here, the greatest DUI lawyer as far as uh, in the state of Georgia, but I digress. <laughs> Is that I don't want to hear the excuse, Mark, that he is five foot eight. I don't. Want to, I don't want to hear the height excuse because when he lost to Alabama last year, he was too short. Now he's six foot five, two thirty, uh, with the rocket arm. But when he loses, he's five foot eight, and he's like the the Burger King guy with the guy that has the hands that were too small to hold a Whopper. I don't want that to be the excuse as far as 
uh, if they were to lose. He's on the football team. I don't understand that as an excuse. If anything, you were basically saying that you have recruited, signed, and are playing the wrong person. If he's not good enough, he's not good enough, then you're not good enough. I, I don't understand that excuse. And that was the thing. When they lost, uh, as far as the Alabama game last year, all this, he couldn't see over the offensive line. The defensive linemen, all they had to do was put their hands up the bad his passes down. Sure. The reason why he threw the interceptions was because he was too short. But he wasn't too short prior to the game, Mark. And that's the thing I didn't, didn't understand then, and I'm not going to understand it now if the Bulldogs come up with that excuse again, as far as the fan base, that is. So. Well, you as an Alabama fan, all you have to say is, okay, well, whether I agree with you or disagree with you, let's say you're right, your quarterback's not good enough. Okay, you're not good enough. That's like, can can we say that uh, every Kansas fan can say, none of our players are good enough, therefore we're not good enough. Yeah, that's the answer. <laughs> wow. Yeah, that's, that's, that's truly something else. But it's, it's, it's been an interesting, interesting season, and everything is going to play out. I was really surprised. Cause I didn't know initially, because uh, I really don't look at the, uh, you know, other than Alabama schedule, I, you know, be honest as far as, uh, looking at the other schedules, but I was surprised that Ohio State was going to be on the road versus the University of Michigan. For whatever reason, I just thought it was going to be be as far as in Columbus, but that's interesting as far as concluding the season as far as on the road, but then the week prior playing Michigan State and Columbus. So I guess that would be Michigan State's uh, elimination game as far as uh, the Final Four because honestly, Mark, unless unless you know something that I don't know, I don't, I can't see Michigan State going to Columbus and be no Ohio State. So. Yeah, I don't think so, but um, I would not be surprised by it. Um, this uh, may not necessarily be a vintage Ohio State team, but uh, what happened with the Michigan game is obviously they did not play last year, and the Big Ten decided that they wanted to keep the rotation what it is by year. So actually Michigan's benefiting from the COVID year because they are now getting to play Ohio State at home back-to-back -back years. Wow, wow, wow. Well, it's going to all come out in the watch, Mark. It's going to all come out in the watch. Again, as always, a pleasure to speak with you. Take care, continue to do what you're doing, and I look forward to speaking with you again. Appreciate that, Kevin. Thank you so much. All right, all right thank you. You know, the one place where I may differ with Kevin right there, if I'm understanding his last comment and I didn't want to keep him on the line, is that to me, it doesn't all come out in the wash. Uh, those people that say it all works out, well, obviously it works out. We get to the last game of the season, we play a championship game in conference, and then the, the committee decides the final four. So yes, that's how it works itself out. They, they have to select... They have a deadline to select the final four teams. That doesn't mean it worked itself out. That doesn't mean that there's not a number five team or a number six team that have just as much right and just as a qualified resume as the four teams that got selected. It just means that the committee made a decision, which they have to. All right, everyone, welcome into the Voice of College Football. Who's next on the line? Hey, Mark, it's Drew. How are you doing tonight? Hey, Drew, I'm doing just fine. What's going on? Not too much, Joe. Obviously, I want to talk about this Wake Forest ranking a little bit. Yeah. So, I, I mean, maybe it, just, it shows you that when you don't win very often, it doesn't take much to please you, but I'm pretty happy with it. Um, I think us being ahead of Notre Dame makes a lot of sense. Uh, I also think, at least in my mind, even if I don't necessarily agree with this poll, I, I feel like it's more logical than some of than the AP or some of the other polls. In other words, I see them as basically looking at, you know, Notre Dame has a loss, so they shouldn't quite be ahead of Wake Forest or Oklahoma, but Notre Dame should still be in the mix because they have a good, you know, they're a good football team and they only lost to Cincinnati, who's highly ranked. But to me, that makes a lot more sense than, you know, having Oklahoma at four, Wake at 10, and then Notre Dame at nine. Because any argument in my mind that you could make for, say, Oklahoma, why can't you make that for Wake or vice versa? But that's really neither here nor there. But 
one thing I wanted your opinion because I'm still a pretty, I wouldn't say casual, but still just a novice college football fan. That's why I like people like you that have more knowledge. But what I found interesting about this ranking is you have three ACC teams. And if you count Notre Dame, which you kind of should, there's four. So Pittsburgh is ranked 25th. And NC State is ranked 19th. So I heard you talking earlier that Wake needs help. And I kind of would like your opinion on that a little more because maybe I'm just being naive. But I I actually think this, in a way, is almost set up well for Wake. Because say we go to Chapel Hill, we beat the Tar Heels, we're 9-0. and Presuming State doesn't lose, we're going to be playing a top-20 team. We get that win, hopefully. And then presuming Pitt runs the table, we'll probably have to play another top 20 team in the ACC championship game. So then you have a 13-0 and Wake Forest with two top 20 college football ranking wins and a string of other, you know, solid UVA, Louisville type wins. So I still would say, how do you keep them out? But I'd like your opinion. Okay. Um, my statement to be, precise about it was that Cincinnati needs help. They will need help uh, because they're already at number six and their resume is just going to continue to falter while everybody else is strengthened. And that I followed that up by saying that wake probably or might, whatever my terminology was needs help. I don't know for sure, but they may need help. Wake doesn't, does not First of all, let's start with the premise that we don't know what the committee is going to decide. So hardly any of this that we state can we say this is a 100% guarantee or this is a 0% guarantee. It's all somewhere in a gray area between 10 and 90. Uh, I can definitively say if Georgia wins the rest of its games, it's going to the playoffs. Yes. Uh, But there are a few statements we could make like that. So, yes. We have never seen a Power 5 champion go undefeated and not be selected in the, what will be, eight years of a playoff. But I would doubt that we've seen a Power 5 team at this point in the season be undefeated and ranked this low. That There's been very few, if any. So what I mean by Wake possibly needing, I hope that they don't need help based on the way I perceive it and would select it. They would not need help because we already have a possibility of, we we already have one conference champion is going to have a loss for sure. And therefore the other four in my view would go if, if I was making the call. So they would be good to go if they won all their games. But in this situation, I could draw up a number of scenarios, a few. One of the more likely ones would be that Alabama beats Georgia in the SEC championship game, and they're both going to the playoff. And then Oklahoma goes undefeated. They're going to the playoff. And then Michigan State, let's make it easy. They go undefeated. There are going to be your four playoff teams, and Wake Forest isn't even going to be I want to say considered because they're not even going to be close to have having the credentials of the other teams. So yeah. I that, think that's the one that is the one scenario where it would be like a no brainer. They're left out, but or Ohio so state, saying, like, they might need help or put Ohio state in place of Michigan state. And even though the Buckeyes have a loss, they're going to get selected over wake forest. Uh, you think I don't know. You think so, def- like definitively? Well, again, no, not 100%, but about 98% that if Ohio State, which sits right now at number five and Wake at number nine, plays a tougher schedule between now and that selection, I don't know how Wake is going to make up ground at not playing as tough a schedule. I see what you're saying. Um I do believe I'm not sure about Ohio State, and I'm not even like making this a point of contention, but I'm just looking at some of my texts from my friends and stuff from Wake, and it looks like at least the last four games, I know this is like the classic Wake critique, the season hasn't started, right? 
But these last four games, it's the 14th toughest schedule in the country. So I guess, and maybe I'm being just, you know, looking at the world through Wake Forest colored glasses. But I, to me, I look at this ranking and I see it more as the committee saying both to Wake and Oklahoma. You're not quite there. You don't deserve it yet. You, there's still a third of the season left, but if you keep on winning, you'll keep on rising type deal. So once again, it's not that there's not a scenario where Wake isn't left out, but I guess I really wasn't – I was, like I said, I was pretty optimistic about it. I was like, okay, well, yeah, if we if we run the table, we'll be – if we're not the top four, we're going to be the first man left out probably. So it is what it is at this point. Well, I think if Wake wins the rest of its games, and we're talking about five quality wins, that they probably have a 80 or 85% chance of making it. I think it should be 100%, but I, I think it's more like 85. I agree. I will say the one thing, just as a Wake fan, that I think some people are missing, and I think this is the point of college football where like you reevaluate, but we keep on saying four, but I, I mean, DC is not a bad team, but they've really slowed down and they don't have a single ACC win. So I, I think UNC is legit. I think NC State is going to be Wake's toughest opponent without a doubt. And then I think Pitt or whoever we play in the championship, hopefully, but Pitt would be tough. But of course, they're, they're tough games, but I'm saying I think Early on in the season, I think that last four that Wake has looked a lot scarier than it does now just because Clemson and BC have kind of not performed to the level you would quite expect them. But once again, it's not easy to go play at Clemson and win. And they're still a good team. But I don't know. Like I said, I'm pretty happy. Uh, I can probably let you go after this. I don't have too much to say, but I don't want to just always cry a river about how, oh, the ACC, the ACC. But it is a little frustrating, and I think this demonstrates my frustration of you have the college football rankings, which once again aren't gospel, but you have three, if you include Notre Dame, four ranked teams. You know, it's not exactly a joke of a conference, and I'm not sure most people picked up on it, but one thing that really annoyed me is when they were announcing the rankings, they praised Notre Dame for beating UNC and UVA. Then when Wake came on, they said, Wake hasn't played anyone. Well, Wake also beat UVA. They're about to play UNC, sure, but they haven't beat them. But does a Syracuse and a Louisville not equal a UNC? My whole point is I'm not trying to sell people that the ACC is some great conference, but it is a very convenient talking point, and especially, like I said, just the glaring hypocrisy to say, oh, Notre Dame number 10, they have these awesome wins against UVA. And then wait, they go, oh, they haven't played anyone. So it's just stuff like that can get a little annoying. But I'll let you go, Mark. I'll probably call in at some point. But I'm pumped for the game against North Carolina. 1-0 and from here on out. And let's go deep. I appreciate it. Thank you so much. And again, another caller brings up some points in which I'm not going to go through with them on the phone. But um because I, I, of course, have all week to sit here and say whatever I want. Anytime I want to say anything, all I have to do is strike up a live stream or cut a video and I get to say whatever I want. So it's the, the nicety of having a YouTube channel, whereas opposed to you guys, if you don't choose to have a YouTube channel, then you have to wait until you leave comments in the comment section or call me. But um, so therefore, I, that's one of the reasons why I let you guys talk and uh, deliver your points uh, but the ACC is a bad conference. It just is. Uh, it's proven that over the last three or four years, it's got by far the worst record against the other conferences. Now, I want to make it clear that I do not hold past performance and results against the ACC in 2021, meaning I don't do that when it comes to any conference. I don't say, well, the Pac-12 has been awful for three or four years Therefore, it's awful again. No. All that's in the past. We evaluate this season on this season. Uh, and the ACC has been mm, okay 
The ACC is five and nine against the Power Five and Notre Dame. And I was going to mention this to Drew. Uh, Notre Dame's not part of the ACC. So in no way should we be collecting Notre Dame wins as part of the ACC. Actually, Notre Dame's outside the ACC. Therefore, the ACC is playing against Notre Dame. So the ACC is five and nine against the Power Five. Um, the best wins I can come up with for the ACC would be Boston College beat Missouri and Pitt beat Tennessee. That's the best conference, non-conference win for the ACC right now is Pitt beat Tennessee. Every other conference has better wins outside the conference than the ACC. Now, there are a ton of bad losses for the ACC. Shoot, Georgia Tech lost to Northern Illinois. Pitt lost to Central Michigan. Florida State lost to Jacksonville State. And there are others. So, again, as it stands right now, uh, actually now, let me revise that. The ACC is 5-11 and 11 against the other conferences. 5-11. and 11. So, the ACC is, I, I think while... Early in the season, I had to try to draw a distinction between the Big 12, the ACC, and the Pac-12. I think it's pretty clear now. The SEC is the best conference. The Big 10 is playing in such a way that there can now be an argument as to the best conference. But I believe the SEC to be the best conference. The Big 10, a clear, clear number two. The Big 12, a clear number three, the ACC, number four, because the Pac-12 is a clear number five. I think it's pretty, and, and this is odd, and I don't remember this being the case at other times where the conference rankings are very clear to me. It's not like, uh, three, four, and five, or that's a tough call. No, I, I think we've seen enough, and we have enough data to see that the Pac-12 is by far the worst conference. And the ACC is not as good as the Big 12. And the Big 12 is not nearly as good as the Big 10. And the Big 10 still needs to make up some ground to get to the SEC. Although, based on out-of-conference results, the Big 10 could make an argument to be as good as the, the SEC. And for Georgia and Alabama fans, of course, they're going to say, well, we've got the two best teams in the country. We're not talking about the two best teams in the country. We're talking one through 14. All right. Next up here at the voice of college football, who's on the line? Dylan. Hey, Dylan, what's going on? Hello. I just watched the game over the weekend with uh, Michigan, Michigan state. And I'm just wondering if Michigan can still make it if they went out. Sure. They can make the playoff. Absolutely. If they win the rest of their games. Well, can Michigan state and Michigan make it? Is that very possible? Because it's like Michigan, let's just say Michigan State wins out, Michigan doesn't make um, make the, obviously, the Big Ten championship. Do you think it's possible for them to be three and four? We're talking about Michigan, correct? Not Michigan State. Yeah, but I mean, because if, we if, if we went out and Michigan State doesn't lose, I, don't, I just don't know what the chances are of Michigan making it. Oh, so if Michigan wins the rest of its games, but Michigan State also wins the rest of its games. So Michigan's at 11-1, mm -hmm. and one, but Michigan mm -hmm. State goes on to the Big Ten Championship. So you get an 11-1 team that mm -hmm. did not make the Big Ten Championship game. Well, I would think that uh, Michigan's yeah, probably have... got like a 20 or 25% chance, if that, of making it. Unless if Michigan State loses in the Big Ten championship game, then I guess that's another chance. It's just I was very disappointed in the Michigan game over the weekend. I feel like they had every chance to win that game. Oh, yeah. Like, they, they literally – Harbaugh literally – I don't know, like no, – I mean, but yet again, Michigan State – I mean, I, I know there's a lot of Michigan State fans that watch your channel too, but I, I think if they didn't have Kenneth Walker, they wouldn't have won that game. Uh, Thorne was playing really bad that whole game. I mean, I, I didn't see anything, like, really good from Thorne. I really feel like Kenneth Walker carries that team. Let's just say Kenneth gets injured. I really do feel like uh, the Spartans have like no chance. That's just my opinion. But. 
No, I understand that. I think Michigan looked uh, prolific on offense for most of the game. Thought they showed that mm -hmm. uh, their stars were making plays on defense. And, of course, the lead was 16 points midway through the third quarter. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I watched the entire game. I'm just – it's just – I was completely stunned they lost. But I, did, I just found out that, uh, that one of those fumbles, I forgot which one, that uh, um, McInerra made a air on uh, – Cade was in the um, was it Cade was it Cade starting right yeah okay Cade was in the in the tent that's why uh that's why um McCarthy was out there for one play I I just found that out yeah so I McCarthy had the two one fumbles the one he got back and the other one obviously he lost so do you know which one of those mm -hmm. he was in the tent for yeah I, yeah I I guess Cade was in the the tent for one of those plays so that's like Honestly, I don't think they should start McCarthy the rest of uh, McCarthy the rest of the season. I think they should stick to Cade because it's a very big risk at this point if Michigan like has McCarthy out there. Because I mean, I, in big plays, I mean, it's kind of proven that uh, I mean, Cade's not ready. I mean, McCarthy's not ready. JJ, I don't think he's ready yet. But I mean, you never know. I mean, I mean, the Michigan games. Uh, with the, I mean, it really comes down to the last game of the season. I don't think Penn State. Uh, I mean, we can still lose that game. Don't get me wrong, but like, I really do feel like if we if we really beat Ohio State bad or it's close, whichever way. I mean, I think we're still gonna lose the Ohio State game. I'm going to that game, but I really do feel like if Michigan convincingly wins that Ohio State game, I don't see and uh, I don't and Michigan State somehow loses a game. I and then, uh, but a lot has to go in our way, obviously. But I really do feel like Michigan can make it. But I still think we're going to lose to Georgia or Alabama. Maybe not Alabama, but Georgia. If we're four, I think we're going to get blown out. If we obviously get there. But I don't think Oregon should be four. That's another issue I have. Well, you're going to need a lot of help to get there. Yeah, oh, no doubt. Yeah. But I, I just don't think Oregon should be four. That's, I, I, really, I mean, I don't like Oklahoma. I think they've been really doing really bad the whole season. But... George, I mean, Oregon lost a pretty bad team, so I don't know how they're for right now. I mean, they lost to Stanford. I don't think they're doing any better, are they? No, Stanford's not good. They're three and five. Oregon is number four because yeah, they beat I, Ohio State. That's simple. That's that's what the entire resume is yeah. based on almost exclusively. Sure, they beat a Fresno State team mm -hmm. that uh, the committee's got ranked at 22 or 23. But besides that, that's yeah. that's the whole resume right there. That's it. But like the game was so close, that's why I'm wondering why. Like so, yeah, I, it's just it's just so confusing how Oregon's that high. I, I feel like if I mean, even though I don't like Ohio State because I'm a Michigan fan, I really feel like Ohio State would be, he would probably like really murder in Oregon right now. But we won't know because uh, they already lost. But I will say this. I got a couple more things to say. I really do feel like, and most people won't agree with this, I think Michigan has a very good chance this year because um, <clears throat> I do feel like our quarterback has improved this whole season. But uh, the defense is very exposed in that Michigan State game, and they're definitely uh, that's definitely a big issue for Michigan right now. Uh, I, don't know, I don't know if you watched that game, the whole game or not, but I, did. I think Michigan's defense, their run defense, yeah, their run defense was not doing good at all that game. I mean, you stopped one of them touchdowns from uh, Kenneth Walker. I feel like we uh, it would have made a big difference. But then another one more thing um, that I do want to say is that did you did you see that touchdown? Uh, well, the the fumble from Thorne, and uh, we got a touchdown. You think, what, what was your opinion on that play? Because I think I think he fumbled uh, in the end zone. I don't necessarily think he fumbled, but I think that once it was called on the field that he fumbled, I didn't think that there was any way that you could really tell on the replay uh, definitively mm -hmm. that he did not fumble. So I don't believe that they should have reversed it. Actually, I do got one more thing. Do you think they deserve to be at seven Michigan? Do you think they deserve it because it was a close game? Yeah, I think I've got them at seven or eight. I don't remember. So mm -hmm. I, I've got yeah, the only just about right there. The only one that really keeps them. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, yeah, I, I was just curious because I, I was surprised to see him at seven. I thought they were going to push him down really far, like really far. I thought they were they're going to be like ten or eleven in the college football. But you never know. Michigan can make it. Mich Ohio State can make it. Michigan State can make it. So it comes down to those three right now. There you go. But all right. Thank you for. Uh, yep. Thank you for letting me call.
Yeah, I appreciate it. Thank you for the call. Have a good one. Have a good rest. All right. Welcome into the Voice of College Football. Who's on the line? Steve. Hey, Steve. What's going on? How's it going, sir? Um, yeah, just quick observations on the rankings. I was. Uh, I really believe the committee got it right as far as uh, not putting Cincinnati within the top four. I know the AP had him at number two. I think, you know, I, I believe they would have put him at number two. They probably would have caved into the media as far as the media's influence. But I really believe even Cincinnati at being number six, I think, was still uh, overhyped. I, I, I don't, I can't, I'm really surprised why, how Oklahoma is behind them. I think a Caleb Williams Oklahoma team was much more, uh, much more, uh, more of a dominant team than, than Cincinnati uh, in, in those positions there. But, uh, the other surprise to me was Alabama number two with the, with the, with the one loss and their struggle against uh, A and M in Florida. But um, just a real quick point, I was wondering to get your take on this. Let's say there's chaos at the top at the end of the year, and you have an undefeated Wake Forest ACC championship, a ABC, ACC championship a win, then undefeated Cincinnati, and the number four slot is is open. Who do you put in? Between Wake Forest with an undefeated record? Yeah, undefeated Wake Forest, undefeated Cincinnati, and, and you're, you're on the committee and you have the deciding vote who has the number four slot. Yeah, I've already looked at the schedules, and I ran a video a few weeks ago comparing Cincinnati and Wake Forest, and while their schedules are comparable to date, when it's all said and done, the schedules won't even be close. I would vote for Wake Forest. I wouldn't even have to think about it. Yes, sir. Yeah, I, I, yeah. I just don't want to see a Cincinnati team in there. You know, really, I just until we have the twelve team playoff. You know, I would, I, I'd be fine with it, but not not in this format right now. Absolutely, but I'm right uh, there with you. Well, thanks for your time, sir. Appreciate it. Hey, thank you. Appreciate the call. Have a good night. You too. Thank you, sir. Uh, I want to remind everyone that uh, we've got uh, Patreon. For five bucks a month. So the deal is, if you like to put down a few bucks on the ball games, uh, I pick them pretty well. 13 and five against the spread this past weekend. 107 and 69 is the record against the spread this season. 107 and 69. So if you want to do a little math equation, take 69, multiply it by 100. So if you put down 100 bucks on every game, that would be 69 times 100 and then take 107 times 91 because the Vegas payout is 91 cents on the dollar against the spread. So 13 and five last week, 107 and 69 for the year. Plus you get the 12 pack of selections from our 20 media members each into every week that I in fact have to work on after we get done here tonight. Okay. Welcome into the voice of college football. Who's on the line? Hello, who's um, on the line? Keller? Yeah. Keller. Hey, Keller. What's so, going on? I don't know if we just got done talking about this, but let's say Michigan State, Georgia, um, gosh, the five teams that are ranked that are undefeated currently, Wake, Oklahoma, okay. Georgia. Basically, my point is, which of those five teams gets left out if they all won the table? I'd have to go with Cincy because I just, think the committee does not like the group of five. We've seen how the ACC is treated Clemson with a weak ACC schedule. Yeah, so the last two teams that would get in would be Cincinnati and Wake. They're, they're, they would be at the bottom, the least considered. But if you like compare... Georgia would be in at one, Michigan State would be two, and I think Oklahoma would be three. Yes. So, so I think Wake Forest would get in over Cincinnati. I'm absolutely. sorry. Absolutely. They've, they've, they've got a better... Sure what... They're going to have a much better schedule. And by, if the committee had SMU or Houston ranked, that'd obviously be a different story, I think. But maybe Houston could get in the top 25 before the eighth American Championship game. And if Cincinnati can get a win over a ranked Houston in that game, then there might be an argument for Cincinnati. But, I mean, I also have a hard time seeing Wake go undefeated. I think they're going to go at least one and one between North Carolina and NC State. Yeah, this is like, all fun conversation about Hill, Wake. Really. This is all fun conversation about Wake, but uh, most likely 
the probabilities are so stacked against Wake winning five consecutive games against the teams that they've got to face. But it's it's fun conversation, and I and hope I they do it. I mean, I'd love to see it, you know. Honestly, you know, I'm I'm from the West Coast area, so I'm kind of really wanting Oregon to get into the Pac-12 because I'm ready for the Pac-12 playoffs throughout the end. Like, you know, he talked about how the Pac-12 is the worst Power 5 conference right now. Yes. Even though they host the best non-conference win in the country with Oregon's win over Ohio State. Very true. So, what, another question I wanted to bring up, if you don't mind, is <clears> – <throat> If Oregon, let's say Oregon keeps squeaking by teams and Ohio State just blows everyone out. I yeah. think Ohio State definitely passes because they would blow off Michigan State and Michigan, but I don't see the Buckeyes blowing out either of those teams. As a matter of fact, I see them losing at least one of those. Like, Ohio State, I was never sold on them when they start blowing out teams. Like, I know that you like Ohio State, so this may be a little hard for you to take, but... I just never could be completely sold on the Buckeyes because they beat a bunch of nobodies, in my opinion. Yeah, I understand that. I understand your your take on that. But uh, let's understand one thing, that while Ohio State is blowing out the likes of Indiana and Maryland and Rutgers, Rutgers, nobody else is doing that. Do you realize that? That nobody else is doing I that do to those realize teams. I that, but I mean, Michigan State has an 18 point win over Rutgers. And 18, but yeah, but but that I watched that game, and that was a reasonably competitive game. Ohio State just annihilated Rutgers. They had 45 points on the board at halftime. Like it wasn't like they could have scored 100 if they wanted. They could have done whatever they wanted to. Uh, Indiana is another example. Michigan State. And that's They're, what tells me, I think, when whoa, Michigan whoa, whoa, whoa. State can goes I, can into finish, Columbus in I, a couple can weeks. I, can I finish my statement? Yeah. Michigan State mm-hmm. had a 17 to 15 lead on Indiana with just a couple minutes left. They they won that game 20 to 15. Ohio State had 44 points on the board on Indiana at halftime. And the same thing against Maryland. Maryland's competing fairly well against just about everybody else, excluding Iowa in the Big Ten. And Ohio State put up 66 points on Maryland. I'm just saying that even though those teams aren't that good, nobody else, including Cincinnati, Cincinnati barely beat Indiana. Uh, Granted, Michael Penix was in the game, but Ohio State's obliterating those teams and nobody else is. I understand what you're saying. And I think if you go off that, I mean, just based on that, you're probably thinking, oh, when Michigan State goes into Columbus in a couple of weeks, they're going to get annihilated, just like all those other teams. No, did. I don't think so. I think that'll be a more competitive game. But I guess one last question I wanted to ask, if you don't mind, is sure. who do you think is Ohio State is more likely to lose to, Michigan State or Michigan? Uh, that is a great question because obviously one's at home and one's on the road, but I'm still going to say Michigan State. But, and you have to, another thing that you also consider is that Michigan State has had success in Columbus. I mean, you go back to 2015, that game-winning field goal, then 2011. Yes, I know Ohio State wasn't great that year, but Ohio State, yes, there was the 2013 Big Ten Championship game too, but Ohio State has, Michigan State has done pretty well in Columbus compared to a lot of other teams. Yep. And I know we really don't look at that, you know, but it's not impossible to win in Columbus. Oregon showed that, you know. I mean, I always consider Columbus, Ohio Stadium, the Horseshoe, a really great stadium and a great place to play. And I'd love to go there someday. But I just think I'd, I'd like to see – I think Michigan might really want that game against Ohio State that year. I mean, Jim Harbaugh talks about all season he wants to do it. And, yes, I know that, that there's a complete difference between him doing it and him saying it. But I think this could be Michigan's year. We'll see. Okay. So well, thanks for I don't the call. think it's going to be Ohio State and Indianapolis from the East. That's okay. my final opinion of it. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. But thank you for your time, and I'm sorry if I got interrupted. Or, oh, not at all. I no, I appreciate you calling in. Day, thanks for your take. I appreciate it. You have a good night. All right. You too. All right. Yeah, it's going to be fascinating. Michigan State in Columbus to take on the Buckeyes. Wow. Welcome to the Voice of College Football. Who's on the line? Hey, Mark. It's Exploring with Ben. How are you doing tonight? Hey, Ben. 
I'm good. How are you? I'm divine. I missed the first part of the show. I got stuck a little bit work, late at work, so I didn't uh, get to see your initial reaction to uh, the rankings because I had to go back and actually watch them myself. Um, but I can know you're a Buckeyes fan. So what is your thoughts about the their look this year on head-to-head? I mean, at this point, it's early, obviously, in the season. So. I think it's completely fair. They've done the same thing that I've done with Oregon and Ohio State. Although I believe I've got them a spot lower. I think I've got them five and six, maybe four and five. I don't remember. So they've pretty much done the same thing I've done with Oregon and Ohio State in my rankings. Really, the three things that stand out to me is number one, that Alabama is number two, and they don't have the second best resume in college football. So they're obviously favoring Alabama based on talent, eye test, all that. And the more... They talk about eye test. The more that I think that really means brand name, image, uh, prestige, and TV ratings, and basically talent evaluation, not eye test on the field. Because Alabama's resume is good. It's decent. But it's, it's not, I don't think, the number two resume in the country. So that's what struck me is Alabama's a little bit too high and they've basically positioned Alabama in such a way that they could lose the SEC championship game close and still make the playoff with two losses. Uh, observation number two would be Cincinnati is in a difficult spot. And that was really the team I wanted to see ranked more so than everybody else, because everybody else outside of maybe wake controls its own destiny. So Cincinnati at six tells us a lot that they're in a tough spot. And then finally, that Oklahoma is at eight, even though they can play themselves up, they're fine as long as they win. It just basically tells us that the committee has not been impressed with Oklahoma, obviously. Oh, no, I mean, and I agree. I mean, one, and yeah, I saw Alabama too, and I was kind of like, how? But at the same time, I saw Oregon at four, and as a Ducks fan, even I was like, I was expecting six to seven, to be honest. That's kind of my feel, just because of the inconsistency of it on the field. So um, I'm in the same boat. I'm a little, but with Alabama, I was I was kind of like, uh, I don't know. But regardless of that, the uh, did you notice something? I don't know if you pay attention to it. I know like FPI, it's, you know, you go over that all the time. Did you see uh, the comparison with Ohio State and Oregon, the strength of schedule and strength of record? differential i did I, I don't know where those i don't know where those numbers are coming from i don't either but oregon's is like way up higher than ohio state's which is weird i don't know if that's because they feel the league is quote-unquote more competitive I, I don't know where those numbers come from at all it was like a ridiculously lopsided number in strength for oregon i don't know where that comes from so i'm not uh really challenging Ohio State's number at 74 of strength of schedule because their schedule's backloaded. They just finally played somebody really good this past weekend, Penn State, and even their um, record has obviously taken a hit in their standing. And I don't believe Penn State was even ranked in their top 25. I'm, maybe they were. I don't know. I don't remember where Penn State was ranked, if they were ranked. Uh, but anyway. they were 23-ish or something like that? Um, something like that, I don't know that they were ranked. Anyway, um, I will say that, yeah, I'm looking at this schedule for Oregon, and did they base this completely on them playing Ohio State on the road? (laughs) Is that why they've got the 22nd ranked schedule in the country? How is that possible? They played Fresno State. Okay, They played Fresno State, Ohio State, of course, Stony Brook, Arizona, Stanford, Cal, UCLA, Colorado. Colorado sucks. They're horrible. They're one of the worst teams in FBS football. UCLA is down to five and four now. They're a top 50, 60 team, and they're the second best win they've got. Then they've got Cal. They're no good. Stanford, that's the loss. They're three and five. Arizona's one of the worst teams in known existence. They've lost 20 games in a row. I, I have I am dumbfounded by this number twenty two ranking strength of schedule. Yeah, that's I saw it. I mean, again, I'm a Ducks fan. Even I was like, well, 
wait, that doesn't make any sense to me. Because I'm like, yeah, like you say, maybe they're basing off the Ohio State win. But then why is Ohio State so low? Because they went against Oregon. That should almost equal it out. So, yeah, I mean, it could be because of the back load for Ohio State, too, with the strength of record and stuff like that. I, yeah, I, I, I see those numbers sometimes, and I kinda, I'm kind of i confused by them because some of them just don't make it a whole lot yeah. of sense. I don't know where they get those from. I'm not usually confused, but, but when it comes to this one, I am spellbound. I have I have no idea. Be- again, because you know, Ohio State you know, on the other side. Kind of like, so Ohio State's 52 spots behind them in schedule strength, and they played each other. So what's kind of odd about that is that if they're ranking Ohio State to be a much stronger game for Oregon than Oregon for Ohio State, but Oregon beat Ohio State. You know what I mean? Like, are they giving Oregon a ton of credit for Ohio State? I, and I mean a ton of credit, like a top three win in the country, but they're not giving Ohio State as much credit for having Oregon on its schedule, but Oregon beat Ohio State. Like, it doesn't make any sense in a sense. Uh, and even though, like you say, Ohio State's schedule is backloaded, they have now played Penn State. Minnesota's a 6-2 and two team that they've got ranked number 20 in the country. The committee's got Minnesota number 20 in the country, so that trumps Oregon's second-best win and Penn State. I, I don't I don't get it. Yeah. No, no I, I'm agreeing with you. I'm, I'm throwing it out there because I'm it's like, yeah, I don't pay attention to those. Just like FP, just like the FBI. That sounds like a good video. Sometimes those numbers are now. just. But uh, I will tell you, as you are probably the one of the most unbiased Ohio State fans, at least. Uh, I'll have to watch your actual reaction, but don't read the comment section because there's a bunch of whining going on. But to all the OSU fans, it'll work itself out. Oregon will probably, unfortunately, lose something somewhere along the line, like at Utah. And boom, Ohio State will bump up. Ohio State's schedule stronger. It'll work itself out. So to everyone who's worried, relax. Well, are you able to kind of uh, remove yourself from the situation and analyze that? What What do you think is more important, the head-to-head or the better resume? Yeah, I mean, I agree with all the points they're supposed to say. Resume, head-to-head, and even the eye test, which is supposed to be on the field. But I get your point of looking at, like, brand name, potential, talent on the roster. Well, the and point I'm making, I not, not to interrupt you. Committee. I'm sorry to interrupt you. Just to clarify my point about brand name and all that other but I don't think that that should be considered. But I think they are considering it. I think that they're that's their unconscious or maybe conscious bias. I don't think any of that stuff should be considered. But I think it is. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Oh, no, yeah, no, no, no. I agree. It, no, I agree. It shouldn't be. But I do think somewhere along the line, it kind of is. And it shouldn't be at all, period. Because, like, but, I mean, at the end of the day, I think schedule, strength of schedule definitely makes a difference. Head-to-head, of course, plays an important role. And I test plays a role. So, I, again, it's the first ranking. So, we have to see what happens Especially as the, the your uh, as Ohio State as their strength of record gets harder, same with the other teams. Are they going to drop out of the rankings? You know, I, so it's so early. I, I'm not even going to quote it. But I'm just saying, no one needs to worry at this point. It'll the season will work itself out. And ah, yeah, I'm surprised myself a little bit. So, all right, sir. Well, I appreciate the call, Ben. No, you have a great night there and enjoy the rest of your time. You too. Thank you so much. Appreciate the uh, super chat coming in from our guy, Bilal, who says, uh, Mark, this committee is a fraud. Alabama should not be anywhere close to number two. Well, I would somewhat back that up in in, in a certain sense. Uh, I'm not quite to that level where I believe that they should be close to number two. Uh, I've got Alabama at number four, but yeah, I, I don't get the number two justification. And uh, some people, I you, I um, skipped over Mississippi State when I was going over Alabama's quality wins. Yes, Mississippi State's a good win. I forgot about Mississippi State. They won that game handily 49-9. to nine. So Alabama's beaten a really good Ole Miss team. It's not great. They have lost a couple games now and almost lost to Tennessee as well. 
But Ole Miss is good. It's a quality win. It's Alabama's best win. And ironically, their most dominant win against a good team. Now they've beaten Florida, Mississippi State, Tennessee, Florida, Mississippi State, Tennessee, Miami. You'd put all those teams in roughly the same bucket of teams. The committee loves Mississippi State for some reason. Mississippi State, I like them too. I, I think they're good, uh, but they love Mississippi State. Mississippi State's beaten Texas A&M, Kentucky, That's it. Tennessee and Kentucky, or I'm sorry, Kentucky and Texas A&M. Mississippi State didn't play. No. Kentucky and Texas A&M are the big Mississippi State wins. Okay. They lost to Memphis. They beat Louisiana Tech by a point. Okay. Other Mississippi State win, North Carolina State. So Texas A&M, Kentucky, North Carolina State, three good wins for MSU. But they lost to Memphis. They got annihilated by Alabama. And they barely slipped by Louisiana Tech. They also lost to, who they lose to? LSU. So a little high on Mississippi State is the committee, a little bit. But this this Oregon strength of schedule at 22, I, I, every team in the SEC is a tougher schedule than Oregon right now. So there's 14 that should be ahead of them already. I, 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 I don't know. Um, I'm going to have to look up strength of schedule tonight. Unless I just get done with the whatever we've had today. I started recording at 11 in the morning, so we're going to be at like 10 hours. I may just be done for the night. Or we may work on some videos because I really got to figure out strength of schedule and how Oregon's got the 22nd toughest schedule in the country. Hayden is asking, who's the most underrated team that can still make the college football playoff meaning in the rankings i'm going to take that as the lowest ranked team i believe i might be wrong about this but i believe the lowest ranked team in the initial rankings that made the playoff and this would be a great video to cut as well which i can't do it tomorrow because i'm slammed from like 10 in the morning to 10 at night but I would love to post a video where we look at past seasons and see where teams came from. 2014 Ohio State, I'm almost positive they were only like 14, mm, something like that. But we'd have to go through all the teams that made the playoff and see who was the lowest ranked in the initial rankings uh, that still made the playoff. Okay, the college football playoff rankings. Here we go. The lowest ranked team that could still possibly make it. Okay, let's run it down. Georgia, Alabama, Michigan State, Oregon, Ohio State, Cincinnati, Michigan, Oklahoma, Wake Forest, Notre Dame, Oklahoma State, Baylor. Okay. How about Auburn? Auburn is Auburn and Texas A&M are both six and two. Auburn only has one loss in the SEC. Texas A&M has two losses in the SEC, but Texas A&M also has the tiebreaker against Alabama. So let's say Texas A&M wins all of its games. Auburn wins all of its ex games, except they have to play each other, of course. And Auburn beats Alabama. So the winner of this game between Auburn and Texas A&M under those conditions. Alabama would have two losses. A&M would have three. 
two losses if they beat Auburn. Auburn would have two losses in in the division. So it'd be a three-way tie between Texas A&M, Auburn, and Alabama. Get out your tiebreaker book. They would all have the same division record as well because they would have all lost the games in division. So they'd have the same division record. Uh, I think Alabama would be odd man out automatically because they lost to those the other two involved in the tie. So that's a scenario in which Auburn could get to the SEC championship game, and so could Texas A&M. So Ole Miss has lost two games in the SEC, and they lost to Alabama and Auburn. So it's going to be tough for them, having already lost to two of those, but they, they could... So the group of Auburn, Texas A&M, and Ole Miss, Hayden, to answer your question, are the lowest-ranked teams they could make the playoff. Kentucky cannot make the playoff. They've lost two games. Yeah, they're done. Mm, yeah. So there you go. That is my answer for you. The three teams in the SEC Western Division, they're all basically in the same bucket. Uh, and Auburn's got a leg up because they lost one of their two games out of conference against Penn State. All right, uh, good stuff here from everyone. Let's go back to the uh, phone lines. Welcome to the Voice of College Football. Who's on the line? Uh, this is me. Yeah, can you repeat your name again? I didn't quite catch it. Sorry about that. Yeah, my name is Mike. Hey, Mike. How you doing? Good. I've been watching you for a couple of years. I'm a actual enemy exposed Michigan Wolverine fan. Well, I appreciate <laughs> and, you uh, still watching me then. Three. Wow, that takes a lot of perseverance <laughs> from you. I uh, found you from Steve Dace. So I like uh, the report you two have. It's, um, it's very educational. It's fun to watch. And I'm a bit like Steve myself. Uh, Little thing 50 here, and I'm a bit of a nihilist <laughs> watching these Michigan games, better part of 20 some years. And um, I'm just uh, a little overwhelmed with this game on Saturday, having blown the lead that we had. Um, what something no one has talked about at all is the fact that Michigan in the fourth quarter was just gassed, they're exhausted, and uh, no excuse, but uh. That's what uh, just destroyed me and, and the fans, and I'm sure that's the, you know, the team. Well, that is something that I've mentioned a few times, and I mentioned it actually. I don't know if Steve's released our recording from this afternoon on Michigan Podcast, but I just, yeah. ba I just basically made the statement that Mel Tucker has kind of bragged all season, and when I say brag, that's not a knock on him. He's backed it up that his team was going to be mentally tougher, physically tougher and going to be in better condition than all the teams that they play. And right. that must have taken hold in the fourth quarter because anybody that's played football will tell you that, you know, we think about all these other things that go on strategy and skill position players and all this stuff in the fourth quarter. But one of the big, maybe not as much as old style football, but still a major factor because there's so many substitutions now, but still a major factor is the conditioning of the two teams. Right. Yeah. And, and that's Mel Tucker. I mean, that's what he's, uh, you know, spouting about and it's, you know, working out for him. So they, they had more gas and being home, of course, and that insane crowd definitely helped. Um, don't want to whine and complain about that one brutal call. Uh, cause we had so much more time left in that game, of course. And, uh, we did deliver to some degree. So my last big comment for you would be this weekend, obviously, hypothetically, your Buckeyes, what would you be most concerned about if you had to play Michigan State this weekend or, same thing, Michigan this weekend versus, you know, in a month? What would be a Buckeyes, you know, <clears throat> analyst um, concern, I suppose, if it was like this week? Okay, for Michigan State, even though I respect their defense, uh, their bend but don't break, and I think that they do a nice job right. of tackling in space, Right. They compete for the football on the outside. All those things, I would not be that that concerned about the defense. Not that they wouldn't be able to compete 
But Ohio State's offense is overpowering as long as they executed in the red zone and did not kick field goals like they did against Penn State. I think the offense would be fine. The concern would be the defense, even though that Ohio State's defense is improving considerably, they have not faced Kenneth Walker. And the combination of Kenneth Walker and those two outside receivers, Reed and Naylor, you know, when Peyton Thorne's on, which he wasn't totally on against Michigan, but when he was on, he made some throws. He made that fourth and four throw that was beautiful. It was a dime. Yeah. Uh, Ohio State could get torched by that Michigan State offense. Right. Interesting. And 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 vice versa to, to the Michigan point. I I think uh, you know I back in the day I played high school football like a lot of us did. <laughs> I played offensive line, and it all starts with that. And if you're not consistent, you're not going to compete against the big boys ever. So. Yeah. Uh, my concern would be that, of course, and then, of course, having juice in the fourth quarter, and, of course, last week not kicking more than three. So I have favorite over my Wolverines. At this. Most years, I'd probably 14, 18 point favorite. <laughs> um, but I, I, I feel there's a chance, a palpable chance to actually beat the Buckeyes. Um, again, I, I'd give them a, a sizable favorite, of course. Uh, and I'm sure Vegas will for that very purpose, just to kind of, you know, tempt folks to place bets. But, um, yeah, it's that fourth quarter last three days ago. I just was like, who is this team? And I was actually afraid of it. When I saw everyone raise their hand, fourth quarter, uh, I was, I, <laughs> for some reason, I'm like, how are we going to manage to lose this? You know, mm. are we going to do that to ourselves again? And yeah. sure enough, that's what happened. So, lastly, what would you say about Michigan if you played them? This weekend, is it the same thing as Michigan State or not at all? Is it a different strength that they would um, provide to the Buckeyes, do you think? When I looked at Michigan, Michigan State before they played, I just looked at these teams and I thought they're very similar teams. Right. Uh, they they right. both have top two to three offensive lines in the conference. They both, even though right. they're fairly unheralded players, especially Michigan, because they haven't thrown the ball as much, so their wide receivers haven't put up the kind of numbers right. that Reed and Naylor exactly. have. They yep. they showed they showed in that game how good they are. Um, right. And obviously, the one-two punch of Haskins and Corum up until this game was nearly as effective as a tandem as Kenneth Walker. Uh, the two quarterbacks are right. are fairly. Similar, although I think Peyton Thorne is more elusive and a little bit better runner and just more elusive, not necessarily that he looks to run, but uh, he can avoid more contact and pressure in the backfield. Uh, And up until this game, I would have said that he was a better passer, but I tell you, Cade McNamara, (laughs) I was super impressed with him threading tight windows yeah his anticipation there was yeah. one throw that he made down the middle that i don't think anyone made a whole lot of uh you know really blew up as some amazing yeah. play but to me he was he had a helmet in his chest and he delivered a ball in a tight window that you know sometimes you get amazed when you see the quarterback and where the receiver and the defenders were when the ball's coming out of their hand to really understand and appreciate how much anticipation it took to know where the receiver is going to be, not right now, but where he's going to be in two and a half right. seconds and where those defenders yep. are going to be. And he made a couple of throws like that, that I just thought those are, those are NFL. Those are throws that you see Brady and Rogers make on, and I'm not elevating him to that level by any stretch because they right. make them every other play, right. but made those right. kind of throws. So he was a much better player yeah. on Saturday than I've ever seen before. Right. And if he keeps that play up, that will keep JJ on the bench. Yeah. Well, it should. <laughs> so, <laughs> it, right. You'd think. Um, so, yeah, this is why this is the year with so much parity. It's ridiculous. I mean, one through 10 easily is just, I've never seen this in modern like last 10, 20 years maybe, where no. every single team is so decent in their own way. This is the year, I don't know if you agree, where that one through eight playoff. And I'm not just saying that because of my Wolverines. I'm not just saying that because they're holding seventh, barely. <laughs> um, 
or or even eight for that matter, <clears throat> after last weekend's loss. But could you imagine a one through eight, two through seven, and just work its way out? That would be amazing. Oh, it'd be phenomenal. I'm the guy that always argues for the 18 playoff, but not based on competition. So the argument you're making right now is it would just be a phenomenal playoff. And I completely agree. I make it based on fairness, even though, even if we had 50 to nothing blowouts in other years in the first round, I would still say this is what is fair. And this is what is just to represent all the conferences, et cetera, et cetera. But you're right. This would be the year that we could anticipate the games would most likely be great. Yeah, it would be insane. That's what I'm saying. Is this is the one year I, I that I can remember? Um, it would it'd be insanity. It'd be pandemonium everywhere. Yeah. Um, but I, I and that brings me to my last comment. <clears throat> the preseason is a joke. My Wolverines are always ranked 19th or 12th, or many years in the 80s and 90s, second or fourth. And many of those years, it doesn't pan out. You know, the year runs itself, of course, and to see who's who. They got to stop doing this. And I know it's magazines. I know they all sell, but they're paper. <laughs> um, I don't think magazines sell as much as they did 10 or 20 years ago. Um, but, you know, the name and as great of a brand as we have as a Michigan fan, that doesn't <laughs> preclude what's going to happen for the year. So it's just it's nonsense. And I'm just speaking because we get excited and every year because we're we like to abuse ourselves. <laughs> it's just... Uh, you know, but we're not the only team in the country. There's other teams, of course, that go through this too. I did not see Florida State, you know, starting out this year the way they did. Um, the same with Clemson; they've kind of fallen off the face of the earth a little bit, uh, and I'm sure they're ranked in the top three or five, if memory serves, back in August. So, I'd just like to see the preseason just go, and let's just do a test and a ranking based off your week one, your week two. You know, I hear you. Well, I appreciate the call. Thank you, sir. Appreciate it. Come down to Florida. We just moved months ago. We're in Melbourne right now. Oh, the man. Ocean usually, the ocean usually clears, uh, cures all wounds, but oh, not last that week. That sounds, uh, you <laughs> I'm know. Like I'm, a, I'm a bit harsh on my boys. Well, I got to tell you, if you would have made that comment to me between May and September, I'd be like, no, I'm good where I'm at here in Connecticut, but you know, it's right about this time of year, this, this week or last week was about the time that it went suddenly from 75 to 50. Then I'm like, yeah, I can do right. without this because 25 is coming. Sadly enough, I love 50s. Sadly enough, I love 50s and 40s. You know, I'm actually Canadian. Oh, okay. <laughs> I, just I can't don't. Do five, I, I can't do, I can't do five months of Michigan weather in Bay city, Michigan, a little there bit of Bay city. Um, but yeah, no, I'll let you go, and I thank you for what you do, and I thank you for your objectivity, in spite of the very fact that you are a Buckeye. So <laughs> I, well, I appreciate you, it, and I thank you. Have a good one. All right. All right, uh, we got two on the line. Let's take these two calls, and then we will wrap it up from there. Welcome to the Voice of College Football. Who's on the line? Hi, my name's Shannon. Hey, Shannon. I'm from Alabama. What's going uh, on? I, this is my first time, first time calling the show. I'm actually enjoying the show. Well, I appreciate you um, calling. Yeah, and I I know I've read a lot of the comments. You know, I was watching on the YouTube thing there, and I, I watched some of the college football playoffs from ESPN. I know people get upset with seeing Alabama number two. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm an Alabama fan. I grew up as an Alabama fan. And this is, just be honest, is Georgia's number one because they are they haven't lost. And I would say they've earned that spot. Okay. And, but how would it look as, okay, Alabama has the one loss to Texas A&M. And Texas A&M wasn't right. I understand that. The SEC has always beat the SEC pretty much every year for the last heaven knows how long. And you pretty much had a one-loss team in there and have two of the you know, teams that are undefeated there that are looking in. Um, I think if Clemson, their only loss would have came to Georgia and say they were at that one-loss spot with Alabama. You know, would would they still be in that top four 
as of right now. To say, you know, that, I guess that's what I'm asking. And I know people are getting upset, you know, because they're tired of seeing Alabama and, you know, Georgia in there. But it, if Alabama plays Georgia in the SEC championship, which is what most people down this way are looking for to happen, if Alabama beats Georgia and beats them close, say by a field goal, where does that leave Georgia, you know, in the playoffs? Are they out? And don't get me wrong, if Alabama loses another game, they're out. I would be more concerned as an Alabama fan of us losing to Auburn than Georgia at the moment, just because of the, the kind of atmosphere that game brings. You see what I'm saying? Sure. I see what you're saying. Here, here's the deal <laughs> for me is that um, the only reason I have an issue with Alabama not being the number or being the number two team is that I don't believe that the resume is number two. I've got them in number four, but I do believe that Alabama is the second best team in the country. So there's a difference there. I believe Alabama is the second best team in the country. I just don't think that they've proven it or earned that based on their resume See, I, right I'm, now. I'm like you. I have. I have Alabama at number, you know, as far as my pick, I'm, I'm a diehard Alabama fan, but I still put us at number four, maybe even number five, because we have to play Georgia. You know, but in the SEC championship game, we still have to play Auburn. Um, I believe that if Auburn, if Alabama wins out, they're in. But they're going to have to win out and beat Georgia to get in. Um, Probably. I think – I, I I think that, you know, Georgia's pretty much in. I don't think really they have – they don't – I mean, they can pretty much win their regular season schedule the rest of the season. You know, it's just what's going to happen in the SEC championship game. If Auburn wins out and beats Alabama, um, I know it comes down to that three-way tie, but I believe Auburn will be going to the SEC championship. Um, over Texas A&M um, because I just I have a feeling Auburn's going to beat Texas A&M you know it's it's a I don't know I don't like to use the word the words that most people look at it's like which saving assistant was going to beat Saban first I mean we all knew it was going to happen I just figured it was going to be Kirby Smart to be the one the first one to do it you know and not Jumbo Fisher but you know it is what it is you know I believe that if and if you in watching that Alabama Texas A and M game, you know, it was all gonna boil down to who came down to who had the ball last. And that's the way the Alabama Georgia's game's been the last five or six times that they play each other, it's who's had the ball last has won that game. That that's the way it's been. Um I think as of right now I'm more concerned with losing to Auburn because of it being in the kind of game it is. And, you know, it, it's not the, the Iron Bowl itself is, and unless you've ever been to one, I mean, it's husband versus wife, kids versus kids, whatever, you know. And you, you throw up down here and you, you pick one. You pick one. You know, that's just it. You know, um, well, sir, I think I, Ohio State. Gets yep, I, I do appreciate the call. You know, so, so thanks for calling into the show. We appreciate it. All right, thank you. Thank you. Have a good night. All right, the big finale. Who's on the line here at the Voice of College Football? Yeah. Yeah, hi, my name's Willie. I'm a, from Ohio State. Hey, Willie. 78, and I watch, I watch all college football. I'm 73 and retired. I got 50 big screens. That's three 50-inch big screens in my living room, and I DVR and watch all these games on replay. The two things I'd like to talk to you most about, although that caller from Alabama I thought was right on, but he failed to mention that Alabama barely beat Florida this year. 
because of a two point conversion. Sure. And they're still ranked number two. Now, as far as a Michigan, Michigan State game go, Michigan State, Michigan, Harbaugh is their version of John Cooper. He takes good players and manages to lose games. Now, that game against Michigan was the first game all year their quarterback has hit any passes. And he really never hit any over 15 yards if you look back at the tape. He had a 93-yarder that traveled about eight yards, and the guy ran the rest of the way. He's really no threat to pass. But yet, Michigan State's defense, or Michigan's defense, played two deep safeties the entire game instead of one safety and the other one at the line to stop the run. If you're going to play Michigan State, you need to stop the run. Anybody that knows college or pro football, the first thing you got to do is stop the run. And Michigan, for some unknown reason, kept two deep safeties, even when they were in running situations. And I was just confused how, and I mean, I personally think if Penn State is healthy the way they played against us their last game, that they're probably the second best team to us in the Big Ten. When they play Michigan State and Michigan, Michigan will definitely be lucky to get a win. Michigan barely beat Rutgers by seven points. They would have lost to Northwestern if Northwestern wouldn't have fumbled running out the clock. Michigan State hadn't beat a team with a winning record till they beat Michigan. Michigan State's quarterback threw for less than 200 yards. And they have a couple decent receivers. But you do not need to play two high safeties. If you play Michigan State, put your guys on the line and stop that guy and make him throw because he's not going to beat you throwing. Now I'd like to talk a little a bit about our play calling at the gold line. For some unknown reason, why do we keep running Henderson inside the tackles when he's so fast? And why do we go with all tight ends when we get to the eight-yard line? We got they, if we put wide receivers in there, we're going to take blockers away from the line. Our first two possessions against Penn State, eighty-eight killed us both. First, he fumbled, then he missed that block, and twenty-three got it like an eight-yard loss. So our, we went the whole first quarter without a touchdown. We usually get a touchdown in like three or four minutes. We didn't get a touchdown in the first and fourth quarter in that game. Now a lot of that had to do with Penn State's defense. Penn State's probably got the best defense in the Big Ten when they are healthy. And their quarterback is healthy, and they're not turning the ball over. But our play calling inside the goal line, I mean, down by the goal line, was was just terrible in that game. I mean, when we kicked four – I can't remember the last time we kicked four field goals. Maybe you could tell me, but I sure can't remember one. And if you look at C.J., another problem is C.J. Stroud. He, what is his rushing total for the year? I don't think he has 70 yards rushing. And if you've got a quarterback that is not a threat to run in today's college football, you're, you've got some issues there when you're playing good teams. I mean, there's been several times where he's been able to run and he hasn't ran the ball. And he could have easily ran for yardage. So I was just wondering what you think about all that. <laughs> Well, in regards to Ohio State's performance in the red zone, um, you know, I certainly think that to get a back like Henderson's uh, talent on the perimeter makes sense, but there are certainly uh, plays that are designed, trap plays and others, to spring a fast running back through the middle. So you do have that. Uh, you make a good point about obviously spreading out the formation and taking defenders away from the box. Um, so, so spreading out the defense, shoot, the Detroit Lions were the first ones to do it uh, with Barry Sanders, where they basically spread you out, and that just created natural running lanes uh, for him. So, you know, I get your point there. Ohio State doesn't like to kick field goals. Ryan Day doesn't like kick field goals unless he's forced to. And in those situations, he had fourth and longs uh, and had to kick the field goal. And the, in the last one, obviously, he was extending to a nine-point lead. And that's the reason he kicked that field goal. 
uh, I, like you, have said the entire season, ever since I saw Penn State play Wisconsin, that I thought that they had the best defense in the conference. But they are beat up a little bit, uh, and we'll see what they they do with little incentive to win the division the rest of the year. Um, yeah, th those would be my my basic thoughts, sir. What about Michigan State running double high safety or Michigan running the double high safeties the whole game against against Penn, Penn State or Michigan State and not putting that guy up in the box well, and stopping their running attack? Their well, whole their whole their whole team is based, they're up sixteen points in the third quarter. Sure, that reminded me of John Cooper. I mean, that, Jim Harbaugh. I hope he stays at Michigan his whole career because well, <laughs> I don't know what he's doing up there. Well, I mean, he's got a decent team. He's got a receiver that gets a hundred some yards that didn't even have a catch going into that game. I mean, where's yeah. that guy been all year? Exactly. Yeah, he was leaving. I mean, I, I just didn't. I mean, I don't understand. What would Ohio Stadium do? If they took out C.J. Stroud in that Penn State game and put a backup in and the guy fumbled his first snap, and then they put him back in in the fourth quarter and he fumbled again and they got a touchdown, I don't think any coach in America would have put that guy back in. Well, Now, I'm not saying that lost the game because Penn Michigan State still had to drive for the touchdown. But come on, well, those to, coaching to, to moves be, like that. Yeah, but to be fair, one of those two times, first of all, number one, they've been playing McCarthy the whole year. So he has been getting meaningful snaps against good teams. So that's not anything that they've done or did in that game that was any different than any other game. Now, you can question it, and right. I have as well, because he did fumble twice. But you also have to understand that one of those two times that Kate McNamara was in the medical tent, so they had to have him on the field. So that's what happened there. Well, I appreciate the call, sir. Thank you so much for okay, the call. Okay, and call I back like anytime. your show. You do a great job. I listen Thank to you. it every day. If I miss it, I tape it. I appreciate that so much. I appreciate that. And uh, thanks so much for the call. Call back anytime. Okay, thank you. And uh, that was going to be our last call, but we got one more on the line, so we don't want to keep this person that's been waiting for uh, what I see is four minutes. So welcome to the Voice of College Football. Who's on the line? All right, Mark Rogers. We got plenty to get to get to here in college football this evening. Oh boy, I don't know that we have plenty to get to. I think we've got as much as we can get to in maybe a minute or so. Well, I right, let, let me try and make this brief. I, I haven't been able to get a hold of you the last couple of times you've been on, so uh, I just want to get to a couple things here real quick. I'd be remiss if I didn't talk about this weekend. Uh, I will say I'm happy with the Buckeye victory. It could have been more decisive if the red zone execution been there. Positives, I would say, continue to be Travion Henderson. I still like what I see from C.J. Stroud, even though he doesn't run the football as much as we would like. Um, I think the defensive line is getting a lot better. The talent is finally starting to come to the fore a little bit there. Negatives, red zone execution, and you know the back seven of the defense is giving up too many plays in the passing game. But overall, I think a solid win against a very game Penn State team. And I think we got good Sean Clifford this weekend and a, a probably more healthy Sean Clifford than we've seen in the past. So I'm not necessarily surprised that the game was competitive. I thought 18 points was a, was a, a stretch as far as the line goes. I don't know if you have any uh, additional I, thoughts on I, that. I would agree on all accounts. Okay. I do want to get to Sparty and the team up north. Um, I, I will say this. I, I would, by the way, when is your uh, rendezvous with Mr. Steve Dace? Is that tomorrow? Your uh, we recorded Wednesday this afternoon. Oh, okay. Okay. He supply you any built bars, by the way? He loves those things. I'm sorry. Did he what? Built bars. You got to try those protein bars. By the way, it'd be a good advertiser for you, Mark. It would be. Bar. Any advertiser would be a good protein. one. Excellent protein bars, by the way. Okay. I do want to. I do want to touch on that game. Uh, first of all, I, I, I have to say, I, I think Michigan is the better football team. Not that much better of a football team, but I think definitely in that game, I thought that they outplayed Michigan State. W was that number one your opinion? Yep, that is my opinion. I, I think Michigan. Okay. 
So you think Michigan lost it maybe more than Michigan State won it? Yes. Would you they go did. that far? Okay. All right. Okay. Uh, it would be interesting to hear Mr. Dace's opinion. I, I bet he's still kind of crestfallen after the weekend. Oh, event. he um, is. Yeah. <laughs> um, I will say this, though. Thorne, the quarterback for Michigan State, is he more Brian Lewerke or Connor Cook or Kirk Cousins? Oh, to me, he's Lewerke. Okay. Okay. He's, he's, he's a high-end Lewerke or he's, you know, at best, he's Brian Lewerke. No, I'll give it a high end. Yeah, I, I think that uh, okay. he can throw a better ball and he can drop some dimes. Okay. I think he looked capable. Uh, I was really impressed with Walker. Is it me or does Walker have to be the front runner for the Heisman right now? Yeah, anybody who would not vote for Kenneth Walker for the Heisman Trophy right now, I just I don't know what they're watching. I, mean, I, I would tend to agree. Definitely the favorite for the Joe Walker. I like B. John Robinson early, but I think right now clearly the best running back and I think the favorite for the Heisman. I agree. Uh, on to the polls, by the way, Mark. I have to say, and, and I've said it before, Oregon at fourth and Ohio State at fifth, I don't think any Ohio State fans can complain. By the way, is Buckeye talk tomorrow, Mark? Absolutely. Yes, it is. One thirty. I, I, I will be there. Uh, I was just, I mean, it, it makes sense to me. I mean, you know, it, I know Oregon's in a weaker conference. I know they have a very bad loss. Um, are, are you just overall in agreement on that, Mark? Or do you think that they're a little bit high? What do you think? Well, I have the teams uh, right where everybody else, or right where the committee does. So, yeah, there, there's no comparison between the two resumes, and it's only going to get wider, but head-to-head. They played, so. No, I agree. And, and they came, to, it wasn't even on a neutral field. They came to Columbus. Sure. And they won, and they won fairly solidly, Mark. It wasn't they a game did. that came down to, like, some fluke play. Ohio State was pretty much playing for behind the entire game. Now, granted, they had two chances to tie the game up at the end of the game. So it was a, it was a competitive football game. But I think Oregon won fairly solidly. Absolutely. Last point, though, Mark, i got to get to this. I know you're running short on time here. With where they put Cincinnati, does that make it an even longer shot to where if they run the table, they're not getting in? Yes. So okay. Cincinnati ahead, was the thought. team that I was the most intrigued to see where they would be placed be- for the simple fact that everybody else holds destiny within its hands with maybe exception of wake forest so oklahoma's number eight does it matter well it tells us that the committee's not been impressed with their narrow wins i get it but oklahoma's fine win the conference go undefeated maybe even trip up once and you're in the playoff so cincinnati was the one team that i was most intrigued to see where they would be placed because the coaches poll and the AP have them at number two. Why? I have no idea. They're nowhere close to having the second best resume in the country or having display that they're the second best team in the country. So I don't know where that comes from other than preseason perception. And that being one of the great fallacies of the AP and the coaches poll. So once they place them at number six, that tells us they're, they're not in the playoff today. What can they possibly do right. to get into the playoff? Well, obviously, in addition to taking care of their business, they need all sorts of ridiculous chaos to ensue to be elevated yes. to the top four. See, I, I just think bottom line, yeah, they're going to need Oregon to get knocked out. They're going to definitely need Alabama to get their second loss. They're going to need... They're going to need a, probably Oklahoma to lose a game, maybe two. I mean, it, there's going to have to be some things to really fall their way to get in. Yep. And I'm not saying that I'm completely surprised at where they have them at. I think just overall, Mark, in closing, these last few weeks of the college football season are going to be intriguing. I think we're going to be having playoff debates going into the playoff uh, at the end of the season. I think it's going to be great. I think it's going to be fun. 
And I'm going to be watching Mark Rogers, and I'm going to be watching you on Speed Days tomorrow. And there you Buckeye go. Talk tomorrow, Mark. Well, David, thank you so much Take for the care call. Of I appreciate it. I'm sorry I tripped on you there at uh, the end of the phone call. I think you cut out, and I thought you had finished. But uh, thank you so much for calling and uh, adding your thoughts and support, as always, sir. Talk to you soon, Mark. Take care. All right, everyone, that's a wrap here at the Voice of College Football, but certainly we want to acknowledge uh, the uh, Super Chat contribution from Sudhir Dehoop. Great channel. It's important to keep in mind Michigan State is the only Big Ten team recently to beat Ohio State when the stakes were high for both teams. Go green. Well, the last time that Ohio State lost a uh, Big Ten game was, of course, in 2018 against Purdue, and the stakes were mighty high in that one because that knocked them out of the college football playoff. And, oh, yeah, 2017, they lost to Iowa. And, oh, yeah, that was pretty big as well because that knocked them out of the college football playoff. 2016, they lost to Penn State but still made the playoff. Yes, 2015, of course, the last time Ohio State lost to Michigan State and that, again, knocked Ohio State out of the playoff appreciate everybody being here we've got a ton of live streams to bring you tomorrow at uh, 12 30 oklahoma 1 30 eastern ohio state five o'clock michigan six o'clock florida state seven o'clock miami right here at the voice of college football all those on their specific team channels and we will see you next time which again is 12 30 Eastern, 1130 Central on the Oklahoma channel on Wednesday. Thank you so much, everyone.